Hello and welcome to the 10th episode of my Pokemon Emerald Catch Everything playthrough. Uh, today we're back in Verdantuff. We Let's just have a look at the team from last time. Uh, so Curly is kind of level 25, the other two are level 26. So we're getting up there pretty quickly. Uh, first thing we're going to do is come in here and we are going to use Rock Smash. So I did teach Zigzagoon Rock Smash uh, in between episodes. So it can finally break through here, and then we will be able to get through to Rustbro. And we get the HMO4 for strength, which is going to be useful later on. And now we can carry on. So I'm going to head to Rustbro. We are going to go into the Devoncourt building. So if we head up to the top floor. We are going to go and speak to the president, and he should have something for us. So head up the magic staircase and come and speak to him over here. So we delivered the letter, and as a thank you, he gives us the XP share. So we could have come and got this immediately after we'd seen Stephen in Jupiter Cave, but um, and that probably would have been a better way to train up Zubat. But at least we've got it for now. Uh, we don't immediately need it, but we will obviously be using it quite a lot later in the run. And just outside the uh, Rustbro Tunnel, we see this guy kind of looking around, and if we speak to him, he gives us something, I think. I think he gives us some sort of Pokeball, yeah. And we get the Repeat Ball, so that's good for catching Pokemon you've already caught before. Uh, so. Not something we're going to be doing that often in this run, but you never know. Back up north of Morville, and we are going to be heading up here. So this is the Winter Rate House, just to kind of give you an idea of where we are. And we're going to be going past these rocks and carrying on with the, the main story, I guess. Uh, there is a chance that one of these uh, Rock Smash rocks can give you a Pokemon encounter, and that is 100% a Geodude. So... Yeah, uh, we do already have Geodude, so I'm not going to have to camp for that here, but um, yeah, if you do want one, that's another way you can get it. And so we can continue up this way, and these people are uh, people we've met in the Trainer Fan Club already, and then also someone we're going to be battling quite a lot in this uh, series. Uh, they have three locations they can be in, and they kind of rotate between them. So this will be the first battle of many, I'm sure, and certainly of at least three. And they always have this pair, and as you kind of level up, they uh, also level up, they also eventually build up to, I think, having an X-Cloud and a Magneton, uh, which can be fairly scary, but uh, thankfully Blaziken deals with both of them pretty easily. Unfortunately, neither uh, Golbat or Curlia can really do anything to them at this moment. Hopefully, uh, this is enough to kill between the two of them. We shall see. And uh, not quite. But uh, thankfully, we do dodge the Sonic Boom, so we should pick up the kill here without taking up too much damage, and then we can carry on. And there is there are a few more trainers uh, for us to fight before we move on any further. So they travel around everywhere interviewing all sorts of trainers, so uh, we will... I uh, didn't actually want to do an interview, but I guess we will give them a word here. Um, can't win. Sure. So, again, that will show up on one of the TVs in, in a house if you... the next time we go into a house with a TV in. Uh, now we can come and fight this trainer here. And 
And so now we should be able to take on the Shroomish pretty easily, uh, two hit kill, which is nice. This has all become a lot easier than it was uh, when we were trying to level up Zubat. Uh, but it won't be too long before we're going through that excruciation again. Have no fear. There are no uh, no new Pokemon to catch on this route just yet, but we are about to head onto a new route, so there will be some there. And then uh, there's even more in a uh, kind of the tunnel that's just coming up as well. So there'll be plenty of new Pokemon this episode, or should be. And we defeat Picnic at Irene, and we're disgustingly good apparently, which I think is a compliment. And there's one more trainer here before we uh, head on to the new route and get some new Pokemon to look at. So we now find Camper Travis. And I always think the overworld sprite for these looks a lot older and kind of uh, bigger than the <laughs> the sprites they get for in battle, but I don't know. Hopefully that doesn't poison, it does not which is excellent, and now we can easily knock this out. Uh, once we get to, once Curlia evolves, we will actually start one-shotting things rather than... Um, and that's actually a big thing. Uh, so, Psychic is 90 base power, Confusion is just 50. Uh, so we do lose out on PP, so I could get rid of Teleport. Uh, I'm trying to think if that's what I want to do. I might get rid of Teleport for now, just to save PP for Psychic, because 10 is really not that many, uh, which I am going to do. So Teleport's a convenience thing more than anything, and we do also have an Abra so that we can carry with us if we do need Teleport. So, yeah, Teleport's gone, and now we are dual Psychic Curlia. So if we come just a bit further north here, uh, we come up to this sandstorm and we can see that tower there as well uh, so at the moment we cannot actually progress through this area but we can um, we should be able to later and for now we're gonna have to go around the long way uh, but we are instead gonna come on to route 112 and there are some new Pokemon in the grass here so the Pokemon you can catch on route 112 are as follows so there are Numel at 75% and Marrow at 25%. So, yeah, we are going to be wanting a Numel. We do already have a Marrow. But, uh, yeah, and there are still some trainers to fight first before we pick up any of those. This is the south part of Route 112. There is also a northern part. So, we could choose to, to catch them there or we can catch them now. And I think I will probably catch the Numel now. And. This is probably a good time to test if <laughs> Nuzleaf is dark type or not. Because. Yeah, and it is. So, uh, Curlier is completely walled by Nuzleaf. And to rub it in, it also crits us. So, I'm going to switch out into, I guess, Golbat. Sure. And Zigzagoon's got an item on it. So, I need to remember to take that off as well. Given that money's not really um, in short supply in this game, uh, there's not really any point picking up Zigzagoon uh, unless you're going to level it up a lot because pickup really hasn't given me anything beyond uh, some hyper potions and full heals, which are very useful, but again, they're basically just money, um, and money in this game is not in short supply, as I just said. So we have one more trainer down here and then another up the stairs I believe. So let's test out uh, Psychic here and see how much this does to the Talo. I'm kind of hoping it will one hit kill and it does so that's you can immediately see the uh, increase in power from going from Confusion to Psychic which is going to be a big plus for us moving forward. In the long term, I'm obviously going to get rid of Confusion, but um, at least for now, it's a very handy backup for situations like this, where you don't want to waste PP. Uh, 
and we defeat Picnic and Carol. So we get 272 Poké Dollars, and we carry on up here. So we can see there are two more trainers uh, here, and this guy, if he turns around, we can come through and see the two magma uh, grunts that are blocking the way to the cable car. So, at least for now, we can't get through, but they say they say we need to head to Falaba and get the meteorite, or that that's what they're doing. So now if we come down here and fight this guy, I believe he has just geodudes, but I could be wrong. And I'm immediately wrong, <laughs> and he has an enumal, which we will very shortly be adding to our collection, of course. And, once again, we can see immediately that Psychic is coming in ha very handy. We shouldn't need it for Machop though, we should be able to take Machop out with just a Confusion, so we'll go for that. And, it's a very clean one hit kill. You, the thing about um, when you're running Pokemon like this, especially ones that are weaker before they evolve, before they learn, up their, learn their good moves, is you kind of gradually become you start playing through faster and faster because your Pokemon are just exponentially improving. A God of War with Psychic is immeasurably better than a Routes with Confusion, as I'm sure you are aware. Uh, so if I think uh, Psychic should kill from here. In this game, um, Sturdy, which some Geodudes have, uh, doesn't act the way it does in later generations, where it uh, is basically an inbuilt focus sash, uh, which is quite a good change. I think that's quite an interesting mechanic uh, for especially competitive play, although it does make some uh, wild Pokemon very annoying. Um, but I think it's a good change, however, yeah, it doesn't apply in this game, and therefore we are able to one hit kill pretty much everything. Um, in the game, unless it resists or doesn't take enough damage, but you know, if it if it does enough damage to kill, there's nothing that won't die, basically. Which <laughs> it's not a very good way of explaining what I've just said, but you know, I think you're starting probably probably starting to become aware that that's not uncommon. And so now, what I'm going to do is the next stage is to go through the fiery path, which we, if we head in there, that's what's there, uh, but first I do want to catch a normal, so I'm going to be cycling back and forth until I find one, hopefully we get it first try, and we do. Uh, so I think it can take a confusion, and I sort of think if it can't, then I'll deal with it because it's 75%, so it's very easy to find another one. Hopefully it lives this, and it does, which is excellent. And now we can just start throwing Pokeballs. I did pick up some additional Pokeballs and some Great Balls, and we obviously got the Repeat Ball outside of Rushbow Tunnel. Uh, so I'm just going to start throwing these. Uh, Premier Balls are the only ones that aren't currently at quite a nice round number, so we'll go with those first. And it does work. So, yeah, there's the first Pokemon of the episode, a Nummel. Now, uh, I am probably going to go back, I could go back and heal up quickly, healed up and ready to carry on. Uh, the Numal we did catch has a Rothberry on, so we get one of those free and that heals burn, uh, I believe. So now we can come into the Fiery Path, which has some new Pokemon for us. So in the Fiery Path, we can actually see uh, Numal at 30%. Coughing at 25%, Torkoal at 18%, Machop at 15%, Slugma at 10%, and finally Grimer at 2%. So we've got quite a range of Pokemon here. Um, I'm kind of surprised they put so many in here because it's not a very interesting area. Um, and there's other kind of wild Pokemon areas that there aren't enough different types of Pokemon in. Um, but Hey, uh, not complaining too much. Uh, coughing and uh, Grimer are both 
poison types, which are going to be quite interesting to catch. And then you've obviously got the fire types of Torkoal, Slugma, and Numal. And then finally, the fighting type of Machop, um, which we are also going to be looking to catch, of course. Uh, so, unfortunately, the Pokemon we've seen coming through here are only normal. There is a strength boulder there but we do not currently have the badge required to use that. Uh, so once we uh, defeat the next gym we will be able to push that boulder and see what's on the other side and there's a couple of items there I believe. So we do get a coughing. Uh, coughing is 25% and very much will die to a confusion. Uh, so what I'm going to do is switch out into Golbat and hopefully Golbat can do some damage. It's quite handy having Illumise with Quick Attack just to um, clean up any... and that does kind of more than I was expecting, but I suppose coughing is much more bulky on the special side... on the physical side than the special, so perhaps not too surprising. Hopefully we can pick up another first ball. Yeah, so that's very good. We have one down, and now we're still looking for Torkoal, Chop, Slugma, and Grimer. Uh, so I think I might as well carry on on my catching spree, but I will finish. Uh, I'll finish the route. I'll finish the area first and just head out here. And so this is the northern part of Route 112, where again you can get a Numal at 75% or a Maril at 25%. And before too long we find a Machop, so that's going to be another Pokemon we're looking to catch. And I'm going to switch to, uh, I guess, Golbat. Yeah, I'll go to Golbat and use Bite again. Bite is uh, not very effective on Machop, so it shouldn't do too much damage. Uh, we will probably get crit, but thankfully also um, Golbat has four times resists fighting type moves, so we don't have anything to fear from even a crit karate chop. I could go for a leech life to weaken it even further. I don't think that would kill, but um, I don't want to risk it, so I am just going to start throwing balls again. And we're going to keep using premier balls because they're the ones that uh, are not an even number currently. And they seem to be working pretty well for us so far this episode. So that's another one caught, and we can continue our hunt for Torkoal, Slugma and Grimer. We've actually got pretty lucky here, uh, after going a bit unlucky on the plus hill grind. This is only, I think, something like the 10th or 11th wild Pokemon we've bumped into, and it is a Grimer, which is the 2% encounter in this cave. Uh, I did also bump into a Slugma, but A, I wasn't actually recording, and B, I thought I was, I was talking to myself, but I was not recording and B, uh, I killed it by accident, so <laughs> there isn't too much to say about that one, um, but we are still hunting for it. And Grimer is the rarest thing in here, so Slugman's 10%, Torkoal is 18%. I didn't expect Bite to do as much as it does, because uh, Grimer is fairly specially bulky, or at least Muck is. I don't know too much about Grimer, to be honest. but. Um, I think that's enough damage. We could go for one more Leech Life, but again, I'd rather waste more Pokeballs than uh, have to find another 2% encounter. And... Four in a row. That's four in a row for the Premier Balls, which are only as good as Pokeballs, so... We've had much worse luck in the past with Pokeballs, but clearly... Someone is smiling upon us, upon our use of Premier Balls to catch everything. And immediately, we found our Sugma. Uh, last time I used Confusion on it, not expecting it to kill, and unfortunately Sugma is a very bad Pokemon and it did kill. So instead, I'm going to switch out into Golbat and use Bite. Rock Throw does nothing because Golbat's actually fairly bulky and Sugma is again terrible. Uh, Slugma has the ability Flame Body, which, I mean, it almost got killed by that bite. And words fail me. Uh, the, <laughs> the ability Flame Body is actually really useful uh, for hatching eggs. Half the time it takes for an egg to hatch, half the number of steps, uh, which 
we are going to be doing some breeding, so that will be very helpful for us, and especially uh, if we're looking for a specific nature and we want to hatch loads of eggs, it'll save us a lot of time. And it wasn't too, too long. I do actually really like the Torkoal Sprite in this game. I think it's never looked cooler than it does in this in this game. Uh, I don't particularly like how it looks in Gen 8, at least. Um, oh, that is incredibly annoying. <laughs> well, we crit it, and we get some free XP with Curlier, I guess. Still no Torkoal, but we did hit level 28 with Curlier. And finally, we do actually find another Torkoal. It's been surprisingly difficult. Uh, you can see the exact number of Pokemon I've uh, bumped into pretty much from how much PP I've used. Uh, I am going to go for Confusion again, even though it killed last time. I do think Torkoal can take it. I really like Torkoal's sprite in this game. Uh, I just think it's really cool. It looks genuinely like it's burning up. It's like a slightly darker orange than it is in some of the later games. I just think it looks a lot better. Um, judging by how much Confusion did, I do feel pretty safe going for Bite, so hopefully it can take it. And that did more damage than I expected it to. Maybe Golbat's not as dreadful on the special side as I think. And there we go. Um, so Torgol is caught. We have caught everything in the Fiery Path. So we have our Numal, Coughing, Torgol, Machop, Slugma and Grimer. And we can now carry on with the rest of Route 112. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is switch out Curlia because Curlia is currently level 28. And instead switch to Combuskin and Golbat as our two main Pokemon and pick up our bonus item which is a Repel. Uh, so I'm going to come and pick up all these berries first. So we get some more Ross berries which he'll burn and maybe some of these others will be useful for making Pokeblocks or something in the future. I don't know if that guy can turn in this direction and catch us stealing the berries, but hopefully not. I would quite like to do these as a double battle if possible. And there we go. So, that didn't take too long and we should be able to hopefully take these out pretty quickly. And we should, yeah, we should be able to one hit kill the Shroomish uh, in any number of ways. So let's go for an Ember, and then we attack the new. Hopefully, Ember kills. If it doesn't, I'll look like an idiot. But at least Wing Attack kills. So. <laughs> You know that wasn't a bad call. And Ember kills as well. So yeah, we've kind of, because we've done absolutely everything, uh, building up to the gym in Morville, we're now pretty over-leveled uh, for this part of the game. But that's fine, we'll have plenty of time to uh, have under-leveled Pokemon once we start doing some breeding and actually have to train stuff up again. And Combustion gets to level 27 as well. Uh, hopefully Double Kick takes out the Slugma, and it does, because Slugma is terrible. And there we go, so we get the fire started out of the way, and we can now carry on. And the sprite for the fire starter, I believe, is the same as the one I always thought it was the same as the one for the for the bird catcher, but actually maybe it's not. And um, that's something I'll have to check. So now, if we come down here, we see that this is the sandstorm area again, and we will not be able to uh, get up that way. You can, however, if you're very careful, you can come up like this. So <laughs> if you do wish to get to this area uh, before going around the other way, uh, which I'm going to do. We can skip that whole section. I don't think there's any benefit to doing it, but it's there if you would like to, and it's just an interesting interesting manoeuvre, I guess. And my chop uh, should go down to a double kick, hopefully. Uh, it doesn't, it takes one, so we will 
have to take some damage with Combuscan, but it's not too bad. We take 19 damage from Seismic Toss. And we are about to be able to heal anyway, so it doesn't matter too much at all. So now I'm going to uh, come back down and go and carry on with the rest of the route. But I just want to show off that little, like, I guess, shortcut, if you want to call it that. And so now I think we've got a rich boy, or maybe a cool trainer, to see off. Yeah, so we get cool trainer Wilton and his electric. So I'm not going to use double kick just because I don't want it static, but hopefully Ember is a two hit kill. It's almost a one hit kill, and thankfully I avoided static in order to get T waved. Um, which is always fun, and because the cool trainer he has a super potion. So this shouldn't be a very annoying fight when you're 10 levels higher. Um, but apparently, electro fights in this game have a way of, of making many, many fights more annoying than they should be. Uh, so I'm going to switch out of that Whalmer and switch to Golbat. Hopefully, Golbat can two hit kill. Golbat's pretty close to a level as well. Splash anyway, so no, nothing matters. And there we go, so we get to level 27. Mako Heater, we will definitely be able to kill with one wing attack, so that will then be us done for with this trainer, and not too far off being done with the episode. We've actually managed to get quite a lot of done. A lot of new Pokemon and made some progress up the new routes, but um, yeah, unfortunately, not caught any Pokemon that we were actually going to be using. <laughs> so, or I guess Snugma to some extent. So, if you come up here, we get access to a new TM and a new um, a new mechanic in this game, which is the making of secret bases. Uh, so. This is something I don't really intend to show off because I think they're a bit pointless, but they can be quite fun to make uh, if you wish to do so. Where basically any time there's a tree like a tree that looks like this, or a uh, big thick grass grass bush, or a, an indent in some rock, you can make a secret base, and there are some various things you can put in there. But it's mostly decorative stuff and not of too much use. Uh, in this game, I believe if you have a secret base and you fight someone else who also has a secret base, uh, their team gets saved in in their secret base and you can actually fight that again at any point. Um, so that's kind of fun. Um, you can also, there's a kind of pointless cut tree here because you can just cycle around, but uh, this is going to be our kind of midway point for the, for the journey. We can see the TV's going with our interview from Gabby and Ty earlier. But we can rest up here and heal up all of our Pokemon and they still look tired, but they are not. They are fully healed, so we can leave. Uh, she will just keep infinitely asking you that question and constantly saying they're fully tired, So, or they look very tired. Uh, if we come up here, this is A, that's where you would make a secret base uh, by using secret power on that rock, and if you come down here, you can see this is where we were earlier. So yeah, we can also pick up a free berry from this girl here, so that she gives you a raspberry every single time, once a day. So if you are short on raspberries, that can be a good place to get them. And there's also three more here, so we should get seven raspberries in total. And that will be the end of the episode, actually. Uh, there's one more trainer I could fight, but I'm going to leave that for the start of the next episode, uh, because we are done with Route 112. And... believe she is actually on the next route so I will leave her for that and there's gonna be a lot of trainers oh yeah so route 113 is west so there's a lot of trainers for next episode lots of um, I don't know can you actually just sneak behind her oh you can I had no idea I assumed that was a mandatory trainer but apparently not so yeah we will be heading on to route 113 next episode uh, thank you very much for watching I 
hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. <laughs>